Um, I would like to welcome everyone to the 2023 um, Special Olympics Maryland 10 pin bowling uh, preseason webinar. Um, we'll mainly be going over the season, but just so you have these dates, make sure you have them on your calendars and your athletes have them on the calendars. Regionals are currently scheduled for November 12th, 2023, and state finals December 3rd, 2023. We will go over a little bit more detail, but again, today is mainly focusing on um, the season. And um, as a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and will be posted to the Bowling Coaches Resource page along with this slide deck um, tomorrow. So, um... Again, welcome everyone. My name is Steve Bennett, uh, Senior Director of Sports and Competition for Special Olympics Maryland. If you don't know me, but I think everyone on this call that I saw, I've met at one point or another. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Appreciate you taking the time to join us this evening. Um, so I'll hit a few of the, the basic slides here, and then Elizabeth and Rich Domros um, will get into more of some of the bowling specific information. But just as a reminder, um, before you start any training season, any sport, anything of that nature where athletes, partners, volunteers, et cetera, are coming um, to participate, um, we have to make sure that all your paperwork and certifications are valid and current and um, in place. So work with your area program or your county program and the leadership there to make sure um, you're aware of the paperwork and can get updates, anything that needs to be in place. But again, no one can participate without having their proper certifications and paperwork in place. Um, absolutely no exceptions. Don't say, oh, I know it's coming. You know, you've got your medical exam next week. Come on in and bowl with us. Absolutely no exceptions to that, that um, situation, okay? Mm -hmm. So just make sure uh, you work with your area leadership and have all those things in place. Um, we talked about the first bullet point here again, just re-emphasizing all of that paperwork must be in place. Um, it's, again, it's for the health and safety of everyone, and we'll make sure we have everything in place moving forward. And then as we'll, as uh, Elizabeth will, will tell you, um, in one of the, the grids that has all the dates and deadlines and timelines is we want to make sure at the beginning of the season that those are current and valid through the end of the state championships, assuming that um, everyone is is looking to uh, be able to participate in that respective. Um, but again, just work with the area leadership well in advance of your first practice, make sure you have everything in place. Here's a basic um, grid, and we have several grids that have this uh, basic information. But if you're unsure of what the requirements are, um, this is a grid where you can start with. I think everyone that I saw on here um, has coached before in some capacity. So athletes, it's their um, CDW or their communicable disease waiver form, as well as their athlete uh, medical form, which includes the registration. And then for unified teammates and volunteers, it's their uh, background check and screening, protective behaviors, and their CDW as well. And you can see with sports volunteers, it's the same thing there with the addition of uh, the concussion certification. And as a specific example for bowling, as we do have those assistants that um, in some cases work with the ramp bowlers as the assistant ramps or assistant ramp bowlers mm -hmm. um, that includes them in the sport volunteer grid that you see here so just want to make sure that you have those any assistance with the ramps that you're aware that they fall in the sport volunteer category um, assistant coaches um, it's the same thing there with a coaching special mix athletes course um, which would get you that assistant coach sports certification. And then with the head coach, it's the CSOA or coaching special mix athletes. And then the sports specific training course that um, Rich will be um, hosting for you guys as well. So um, again, just make sure um, that you have this grid and that all of these things are in place um, prior to starting your season. That would be wonderful. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth, and she's going to give you um, some of the more specific deadlines as they relate to the bowling season and leading up to the end of the season. Um, so please note with all of these dates, they are when they are to be submitted to 
um, us at headquarters to be working with your area leadership um, if they may need it a week or two prior um, to make sure that they're getting to, to us on time to allow that all um, athletes, volunteers, coaches, and assistant coaches are able to participate with in the competitions and um, are registered correctly. Um, so training registration, so anyone that's gonna be training with you, again, those volunteers, any ramp assistants as a sports volunteer, assistant coaches, head coaches, whether they're able to go to one or both competitions um, for um, like your coaches and your volunteers more than your athletes. Um, they need to be in GMS in training for bowling um, by the 27th of September. And then if anyone's in there and we're missing a form, it didn't get sent in to um, us at headquarters just in time, we'll send out a reminder following that. But all of that needs the uh, last date for any missing forms is going to be the 9th of October. And as Steve mentioned, um, everything has to be valid through December 3rd of 2023. So if you have an athlete where it's expiring come October, November, make sure that they're getting into their uh, their medicals now so that it's good through that first weekend of December is when it needs to be valid through in order for them to compete at states. The competition competition registration deadlines for regionals is the 24th of October and then for states is the 22nd of November. Um, so that's when we'll need the rosters and who's competing in um, whether it's single, double, unified, traditional, everything like that needs to be into GMS um, by those dates. So make sure you're getting that information to your area leadership and GMS person um, with enough time for that to be updated by those dates. Yeah, and one one thing I'll mention up at the training registration deadline, everything is absolutely spot on. Um, the one thing just to mention is, and we've had this happen in the past where an athlete moves to Maryland from another state or whatever, and they want to start bowling. After that registration deadline for the training on September 27th, they can still train with you provided everything else is in place. They just aren't eligible to go to the regionals and state finals. Um, so they can still enjoy the sport of bowling, get to know the other bowlers, um, create that camaraderie and the joy of the sport. But after that deadline, anybody not registered in training uh, just won't be able to advance, uh, but they can still practice and train and um, get to know everyone. Um, so here, those dates are reiterated on this um, sheet here, but this is kind of all the important dates coming up for the bowling season. Again, that training registration and the late certifications um, with the 27th of September and the 9th of October. Um, a very important date um, is the 18th of October. That'll be the last date to... Um, let us know at headquarters, let me know as the sports director, the estimated bowlers for the regional tournaments, um, because the venue assignments are still only tentative um, and can change up until that point of your estimated uh, bowlers. Um, so I want to have that information turned around as quickly as possible to you guys with the location with that registration deadline being the 24th that following week. Um, but please do keep that in mind that the venues may, the venue assignments may change. Nothing is set in stone as of today. With the pre-competition coaches webinar, the link here um, that will be the 2nd of November, um, so 10 days before the regional tournament on the 12th of November. On the 16th of November, we'll be sending out the list of bowlers selected to advance to state championships to um, area directors and head coaches, along with the wait list. 
And then the competition registration deadline, again, is the 22nd of November for state finals. The uh, pre-comp webinar for states will be the 28th of November. Um, and then bowling state um, tournament is the 3rd of December. Um, so some coaching requirements here. This is the same information Steve went over um, that all coaches um, need to have your background check, your class A volunteer um, application, protective behaviors, concussion, you miss the disease waiver, your coaching Special Olympics athletes. And then for head coaches, you'll need your sports specific certification um, that we will be holding on the 16th. Um, Rich Domers will be uh, hosting over at Bowl America Gaithersburg. Um, and I'll be sure to send out that registration link with these slides tomorrow. Um, all of these are good. All of these um, are good for three years. And they, again, must be valid through the 3rd of December of this year. Here is another um, layout. Again, remembering that the uh, those with the ramps um, assisting assisted ramp bowlers are sports volunteers in bowling. So they're not a general volunteer. They need that extra concussion course to be considered a ramp assistant. And and Elizabeth, you can go back real quick. One thing that I, I think is worth um, mentioning, the advanced coach you see on the far right, um, by all means, um, highly encouraged to take the principles of coaching course, a lot of good education and, and information in that. Um, not The principles of coaching is not required at the state level. The advanced coach is for coaches who um, look to go to a national invitational tournament, a USA Games, or a World Games. Um, so again, the principles of coaching is not required at the state level, but it is encouraged. A lot of good information, but I just wanted to make that clarification. If you're unsure what the advanced coach is, that's for um, coaches taking athletes from Special Mix Maryland outside of the state for the next um, national or world um, level events. A lot of the same information. Um, here and all of this information is on the coaches resource page. The bowling specific coaches resource page was updated as of about 1 p.m. this afternoon with all updated information for this season. Um, so if you have any questions or if you need anything from last year, um, please feel free to reach out to me and I can get that for you. Um, So in order to qualify for the state tournament, um, we, same as last year, um, going back to the, away from the COVID 2021 um, adjustment, um, it is the average of 15 games prior to registration for the regional tournament. These can be a combination of other tournaments, league play, or from a complete game during a practice session. Um, so those 15 games, they, you must compete in a regional tournament and then in the regional tournament, um, all gold medalists will advance to states and then some silver medalists from regional tournaments may advance based on a random draw, um, with the numbers drawn, there will be a wait list provided and the drawing will be conducted no later than the Tuesday following the regional tournament. Um, again, we need to make sure we're meeting all those training and registration deadlines, all coaches and head coaches, sports volunteers, everyone needs to have all completed certification requirements by the specified deadline. And they again, they need to compete at the regional bowling competition in on November 12th and have that 15 game average prior to the regional bowling competition registration deadline. 
So uh, just to go over some things, we're looking at um, the same as of right now, tentative um, locations. We do not have Crofton for this season for um, as a venue for regionals. Um, we do have Cumberland, uh, White Oaks Lane, Gaithersburg Bowl America, and the Ellicott City Bolero. Um, I am working with a handful of locations at the moment and we'll be finalizing a location um, early next week. I will be getting that out and letting you know. Um, again, it'll still be tentative based on registration and projected um, teams, but I will send this, this slide out updated with that, um, with that location. And if any changes are made to the entrance going there um, tentatively, I will also update that in this slide and send that out um, next week once that is finalized. For um, spectators at regionals and finals, some of these bowling alleys we know are on the smaller side when it comes to that extra space outside the lanes. So there may be a limit, a limit on spectators um, due to capacity concerns and general operations and safety of attendees. Um, please make note of the possibility and inform your teams that this is, that there is a chance of this. Um, and then once we make a decision, if there is going to be a limit on any spectators this season, um, I will notify you as soon as I have that information. Um, um, rules and reminders real quick. There were some minimal changes from the 2020 to the 2022 rule book um, that has been updated to the coaches resource page, as well as um, it's about a page and a half um, from Special Olympics North America on what those updates are. It's really just kind of condensing some information in regards to assisted versus unassisted athletes. Um, not a lot of that information changed, but all of that is available on the coaches resource page now. So at the bottom, it should, of your rule book, it should state, I believe it was November or December of 2022 is when they were updated. And that would be on the bottom right-hand side of your rule book um, when you see that. Rich, if you want to take over some of these rules so I don't mess anyone up or confuse anyone too bad. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Domrose, um, head coach for Montgomery County and part of the Special Olympics management team for bowling. Um, the tournament for regional and for the state games will consist of singles, traditional doubles, two athletes on a team, unified doubles, um, one athlete on a team, and one unified uh partner on a team. Ramp bowlers will be divisions with the other competitors at the team events. They will not be segregated um, in a ramp bowling section. This is something we've been doing all along. We feel as though it is uh, the correct and right thing to do. And if you get too many ramps on, on a lane, it, it uh, kind of delays things. So it's nice to have a mix throughout. Um, assisted ramp bowlers must have a designated bowling assistant provided by the Bowler's uh, bowling program and listed in the comment section for the athlete. And remember, it's, it's been mentioned a couple of times, ramp assistants need that additional concussion training. Bowling assistants must meet the same requirements as the rest of the volunteers uh, and their, their uh, credentials need to be good through the date of the tournament. Handicap. At all of our tournaments, we use 100% of the average of 200. So therefore, if your bowler has an average of 100, they get 100 pins handicap. Uh, that makes up the difference. It makes it fair for pretty much everybody, unless we have a bowler with an average over 200. If we have a bowler with an average over 200, they certainly don't need a handicap, in my opinion. Number of games, we'll always be bowling three games at both the regional and for the uh, state tournament. Um, one thing you may want to do is if you're bowling two games uh, each week, 
at your practices. You may want to, these weeks leading up to the tournaments, to have your athletes roll three games so they're used to it. We alternate lanes. Um, typically, you're playing on a pair of lanes, say lane one and lane two. Uh, what an athlete will do is they'll blow the first frame on either lane one or lane two, and the next frame is on the, the other lane. This should be something that most of you are doing. Um, however, I found out um, working some other competitions that not everybody does this. So it's it's something that you want your bowlers to be aware of so that there's no confusion when it comes to going to the tournaments. At, uh, you can go back. At the, at the tournament director's um, discretion, we can switch that up if there's some need um, to have an athlete ball in a single lane. But in the 20 plus years I've been doing this, I have not seen that rule come into play. The foul lines will be on for all of our tournaments. Fouls can either be called, called by the automatic uh, detection system or one of the officials. So if, uh, if an individual crosses the foul line during uh, their delivery of the ball or some part of them, their hat, um, cigarettes or whatever, falls off their body and crosses the foul line, uh, that would be a foul and could be called. Bumpers, we do not use bumpers when it comes to the tournaments, either at the regional or the, or the state. Scores from any games that are bowled using bumpers cannot be used towards the bowler's 15-game average. Lane courtesy is required by all bowlers. This is one that's uh, difficult to teach, difficult to enforce, um, but we try our best uh, each and every time, um, I know my bowlers, when it's their turn to bowl, get out of the way. Um, I'm bowling. And it, it takes a while to get some of them to learn that if they're on the approach and somebody is to their left or to their right, and that individual is making their approach to deliver the ball, that you, the athlete that is just walking up should stay behind the ball return until those two athletes, or at least the athlete on the right, so you want them to look to the right and to the left to make sure that another bowler isn't uh, starting their approach because it can be dis uh, disruptive to them. And many times when this does happen, the, the bowler to the left or the right um, will stop their approach because it just disturbed them. So please try to teach and enforce that in your training program this year leading up to uh, our tournaments. Alternates. A bowler who's registered for a singles may also be registered as an alternate for doubles event. Alternates do not have to be assigned to any specific team. Participants are eligible as an alternate only if they registered as such prior to the competition registration deadline. Activation of alternates will be declared by the head of delegation during the delegation registration upon arriving at the site. A bowler may compete in one event at a tournament. For example, a bowler may not both row singles and serve as an alternate or an activated alternate for a doubles team. If a bowler is activated as an alternate to doubles at the regional tournament, that bowler may only advance to the state tournament as a member of that doubles team. Um, they've committed to that team. And if the other individual that they were bowling with is somehow unable to make it to the state tournament, um, the individual who was activated as a double will not be able to compete as a single. Coaches are not permitted in the lane area during the competition, which is the area around the score tables and the chairs where the athletes are generally seated. Coaches may provide advice from the spectator area. Bowlers may go to their coaches, but may not leave the bowlers area to do so. Um, if this does happen, it could result in a delay of game. I think there's more on this on the next slide. No. Nope. Um, one thing, you, if you're going to coach, uh, it needs to be done either between frames, um, before bowling, in between games. It generally cannot be done uh, during the, the after the first ball, before the second ball. 
because therefore you, do, you would be causing a delay of game. Ramp bowling and assistance. Bowling ramps may be used by bowlers who do not have the physical ability to roll a ball with their hands or without the use of a ramp. The athlete must provide the force to make the ball move down the ramp. The ball must be pushed by the athlete alone and not the bowling assistant. The bowling ramp must be set either by the athlete or at the direction of the athlete, either by verbal instruction to the ramp assistant or physical gestures. The bowling assistant typically will have his or her back to the pins while setting the ramp to ensure that it's the athlete who is actually determining the ramp setting and not the assist assistant. In extreme rare situations where there's a unique communication challenge for an athlete, the ramp assistant may turn uh, to face the pins, but all setting of the ramp must be at the direction of the bowler. This is an extremely rare uh, adaptation and must be approved in advance prior to the arrival of the site, either by an SOMD liaison for Boeing or the tournament director. This is an SMO, SOMD modification to the Special Olympics rules, which makes no allowance for such an exception. So basically, when it comes to this rule, um, it must be the athlete's ability to direct the ramp, move the ramp, and push the ball. If an, if an assistant is standing behind the ramp, looking at the pins, looking down the ramp, and aiming the ramp, that's not the athlete. And that's what will cause a athlete to get disqualified because of their ramp assistant. Failure to adhere to the previously mentioned processes and regulations could result in the athlete being disqualified from the competition. It's been, a, it's been done a few times and it's unfortunate, um, but it's the rule's been the same for years, so we all should know how to follow it. Bowling assistants must meet all of the same requirements as other bowling volunteers, um, all forms, certifications, and deadlines, and must be included in the participants in the area's training roster uh, due to uh, Special Olympics Maryland headquarters by September 27th. If an athlete who bowls with a ramp assistant attends an event without their assigned ramp assistant from their area county program, the athlete will be disqualified and will only bowl for participation ribbon only. Ramp assistants fall under the sports volunteer level of coaching certification. The assistant has just as much responsibility as the athlete to be consistent with training and attending uh, the competitions. Attire. You want me to cover this, Elizabeth, or do you want to talk about the clothing? I can. I can cover the attire. Um, but before you get into that, Elizabeth, uh, we were remiss in the beginning, um, as Rich indicated. Uh, I think it was regarding like the alternating lanes, etc. Um, that in other recent tournaments, he had seen that that's not necessarily the case. Um, if those of you who are not aware, Rich has served in a in a capacity for coaching. Um, for Team Maryland at uh, several USA games, and then most recently served as the technical uh, delegate at the USA games in Orlando in 2022. And then just recently, where we had a few other athletes participate in uh, Berlin, Germany, from Maryland, Rich was a technical official at the World Games for Bowling in Germany. So not only has he been involved with many of you have as well, for many years at Special Mix Maryland, um, he's also served in those different capacities, which um, he has gained more knowledge and more understanding about worldwide bowling within Special Olympics, um, as well as um, just being a lead official and has that technical expertise. So um, just wanted to give um, Rick or Rich um, a little note there. And again, thank you for your service and your continued uh, participation at the different levels. So um, with that, I will throw it back to Elizabeth to talk about clothing and please, please, please make sure every year we have people show up with inappropriate attire that morning of, and it is not fun to deal with. Um, so again, we want to make sure appropriate bowling, bowling attire is being worn as it is required. Um, our athletes are true athletes and need to dress as true athletes. Anyone who is not in the appropriate attire listed below uh, will be disqualified from the competition, which we do not want to do. 
Um, the participants, including the bowling assistants for ramp bowlers um, without proper uniform will be disqualified and not allowed to participate. All participants are to be dressed appropriately while competing, and we want that attire to be clean and neat, um, not torn, dirty, or frayed. For shirts, um, a collared shirt must be worn, um, does not need to be tucked in, but we want to see that collar. Footwear, um, all competitors must wear bowling shoes. Those bowling shoes should not be worn outside the venue. They are made with special, special soles so the bowlers don't slide before the release of the ball. And the bottom of the shoes need to stay clean and dry so that the bowlers do not stick on the approach. And the bowling shoes provided by the bowling center may be worn um, for headwear. Um, no hats or rimless headwear will be permitted. Headphones are not permitted um, for bowling tournaments. The Any athlete who experiences noise concerns are permitted to wear small earplugs just in the ear, um, but not a, a headphone, an earplug. Um, for pants um, or shorts, we want them to be similar to uh, dockers or slacks or other makers of cotton or synthetic material pants are acceptable. Um, what we are not looking for is cut off shorts um, shorts within three inches above the kneecap, jeans, sweatpants, or um, exercise pants. We don't want any leggings, spandex, or form-fitting pants that you would see for like biking, boxer shorts, or shorts like boxer shorts, um, worn as outerwear, and clothes which allow undergarments to be exposed. We will be doing a uniform check. Um, of the attire of all competitions upon arrival to the venue, making sure everyone is in the appropriate attire prior to um, the uh, prior to the first ball being thrown for every event. Um, if, as a coach, you have any concerns that a bowler might be arriving without the proper attire. Um, we strongly recommend bringing an extra pair of an appropriate slacks in various sizes or various shirt, collared shirts. Um, do not assume that everyone has these uniform pieces that can be used for bowlers. And I think to just make note of that, as um, there's been one or two counties in the past at regionals and I believe at states as well that um, have had um, for their program, but also been able to assist in extreme circumstances with other programs, um, additional attire there that they have on site. Um, don't rely on anybody else bringing extras um, outside of your county. Um, it may it may be available. You may have some friends or whatever, if they don't need them that you could uh, ask from another program, but it's your responsibility as a coach um, to make sure that um, your county um, and your participants are dressed appropriately. So again, just really reiterating that because every year there's at least one or two at each one of the competition venues for regionals and, and not as many at states, but it, on occasion it happens where we catch it right at the last minute when we're doing our uniform inspection and someone has to run down to the store real quick or whatever. And that just puts some stress on the athletes, stress on the coach or the family members. And that's not what you want. So again, as much as you reemphasize it to the families and other caregivers, bringing athletes and competitors to the event, um, if you have the capability to bring a couple extras, um, highly recommend that. Um, so found a, a misprint here. This is for the 2022 yeah. fall sports season, yeah. or, or 2023 fall sports season, including our 10 pin bowling. Um, if you have any questions in regards to other sports happening right now, um, you can see the sports directors, our um, emails and the sports that we are overseeing in this busy time of year. And as I mentioned earlier, um, the coaches resource page for bowling has been updated as of about 1 p.m. this afternoon. So that has all updated information. Um, and I will be sending out a lot of that information with this slide deck tomorrow. And then these next slides um, 
are all your um, your resources. So all the information we went over prior um, about the certifications and what all is needed, how they're valid for three years, and links to these courses as well are um, can be found on this the general coaches resource page. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to your area leadership. These uh, format, these uh, tables, and then also the coach's code of conduct and then examples of what the appropriate medical and different forms are for the athletes. Are there any questions? I think the one here, I always like to just um, give some more information. Mm -hmm. I think it's on one of these slides here. It's the um so there's not only a code of conduct for coaches there's the code of conduct for families and athletes etc there is a form um about the incident report um and that's one that i just want to let you guys know this is an example of that right here that elizabeth stopped on um this is something as coaches you should have as well um along with the athlete medicals uh, practices uh, when you're traveling to and from events, et cetera, uh, if any emergencies occur. Uh, but this is the incident report. If a um, an injury occurs, um, that's what primarily this form's used for, uh, to document that, to um, send along to the area leadership and then to our state office through your area leadership. Um, but it's also, you see an accident or incident if there is um, a damage of property, which has happened in the past where um, accidentally someone pushed too hard through one of the glass doors in the front of the facility and has broken the glass um, or something of that nature, this form can use that as you can use this form for that um, situation as well. So it's injuries um, and accidents, not only to an individual's body, but also to property. Um, so again, just familiarize yourself with this. This um, form is also um, available on our coaches resource page as well. Um, do we have any questions about the season? Um, anything about certifications, anything like that? I have not seen any come through the chat function at this time. Now, once I get back to it, almost there. There we go. Um, I want to thank you all for hopping on the call tonight. Um, thank you guys for all that you do for our athletes, not just our bowlers, but those of you that are uh, coaches and volunteers for other sports as well. Um, if you have any questions that come up, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, again, I'll be following up this call with this webinar, as well as these slides on the coaches resource page and via email um, tomorrow. So have a good night. Very good. So we'll give you about 20 minutes back from your evening tonight. So um, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you.